I was doing this drill the other day with my students on the left here, one of my young lads called Kai, and then I'm on the right. And I just want to show you a couple of key things that I want to take out from this. I actually call it the tap tap drill, and I'll tell you why I call it that in a second. So it's, it's a really good drill for moving. Obviously, you're trying to be really strong across that T line, cover that T line. And what you're trying to do is you're doing a bit of a ghost there, and then you're playing a shot there, you're playing a forehand volley drop. And what the idea is, the reason I call it tap tap is if you just look at my one on the left there, I'm getting my racket up nice and early, nice and threatening. And all I'm looking to do is tap the ball there. I'm just looking to take my racket up and out to the ball there and pretty much play a backhand volley drop. Nice and simple, short backswing, tap it there, ball comes out, and then I move across. And look how early that racket is up. I'm hunting it. I know it's going there. But what I'm doing is I'm trying to train the earliness of that racket up position, I get into that volley drop and I tap that one there. So let me just roll a little bit and I'll talk about a few of the coaching points. And you might be able to see Kai on the left, a few little things that he might not be getting quite right. And we worked quite hard on this afterwards. So he did a lot of these drills and, you know, got pretty tired, but really strong stuff. Yeah. And I'll just stop it frame by frame. One of the other things I tend to look at, I'm just waiting for the right one. So this might be roughly the right one here. Let me try and make sure we're on the same contact point. So a lot of this drill is also about practicing your reach, how well you can reach for that ball. That for me is really key. And you just notice this one of Kai, he just gets too close, doesn't he? So as he's gone across, you know, he's maybe just mistimed the step, got a little bit too early, and that arm is bent at the contact point. Whereas you notice my arm is nice and straight. So I'm just going to go forward on, a, on the next one. So let me see how I go here. So there, I'm practicing that reach on that backhand volley drop. Let's see what Kai is doing here. They didn't quite get it right. Look, everything looks a little bit close. It's, you know, not quite the volley drop I'm looking for because it's all about reaching. So I call it the tap, tap drill, but it's also whenever I'm coaching it, I'm telling people to reach, to practice their balance as they at that full stretch. There's a couple of movement things I'm going to talk about in a second. So. Let me just go back. So I've kind of used all the tube there. So let me go back to about halfway. Right. So around right about there. That was quite a nice one. So you can see there, that's the reach we're looking for. That type of extension. Let me just go forward on Kai's one. Let's see how he does on this next one. Again, possibly just crowds it. You can just see the difference there, can't you? And I don't think the ball is in too dissimilar of a place. Maybe obviously mine has just got a little bit wider out of, out of the Stingray machine. But this is what I'm ultimately getting place to try to do to try to be nice and extend on the arm, racket head just above the wrist. You want that racket head moving just above the wrist when you're reaching, but ultimately nice and strong through there, through the shoulders, through the chest, and through the core. That's where you want to be really strong when you're reaching. I obviously have to put a, quite a big lunge in, and let's see what I do after my lunge. There we go. So I'm absorbing the lunge, balancing on that leg there, dragging the back foot. That's so key to maintain that front step. If you want that front step nice and strong, you have to drag that back foot. Because before I push back, if I was to try to lock it there and anchor that foot in that position, I think I'm going to be in trouble for two reasons, both for the balance, but secondly, for my recovery. Because I drag the back foot, notice how this knee loads up and how I'm pushing off. So for me, this is a real cool bit. I'm just going to zoom in because I think it's quite useful. So as I go there, absorb it, and watch how much I push off there. Just look at that there. I'm getting out of that shot. I'm trying to get back to the tee. I know I've obviously got to go across and, and do my ghost. So I go there, rack it up, and then I'm doing my ghost position. Again, you're noticing that the racket is up nice and early, pre presenting that full racket face to the front wall. I'm just looking to simplify my swing. There's my reach again. Nice big step. Strong arm, really reaching out. Racket head above the wrist. So that's the ultimate goal we're looking for. So let's go back to Kai on the right here. So you can just notice there, just a bit close. One thing I did notice with Kai as well, it looks like he drops his racket into that horizontal, possibly too early. That for me is maybe slightly defensive. And if you also notice, I think he's a bit open, is he? He's looking a little bit at the front wall. Let me go back to that last one there. Of course, you have to open up a bit, but I think it's about trying to keep some semblance of a side on position for as long as possible, especially at the contact point. Whereas at his contact point, it looks like everything's opened up to the front, hasn't it? And it's more of a bit of a push. He's, he's not really getting that ball in there that well. So there's a couple of more things I want to talk about. There's some real cool movement things I want to have a look at. He does really well with his knee, by the way. 
Notice that knee position nice and bent. Is he dragging his back foot? Not bad. Minimal drag. I'd probably like to see a little bit more of that. And then he wants to explode out of that position, ready to go across. So as he scuttles across, back foot or, or the lunged foot now comes under. I call this the cross under. You'll probably notice mine does the same. Let's have a look here. I get to there. Boom. But you can see that there's, there's, there's more of an explosion of that back foot, isn't there? You know, I'm going there. I'm pushing. Like, look at the travel. I'm traveling with that back foot. That cross under is really getting me across that other side nicely. Quick little side note as well. What I'm trying to do for my accuracy. Again, I just clipped the side wall there. But I'm trying to hit those floorboards more often than not. So by the time my opponent hits, the ball is now glued to that side wall. I'm sure I do a couple of decent ones. Let me just have a look at where I'm aiming in a couple of these. So that one's a little bit closer, but I still am able to reach. I'm cutting across the ball, giving myself decent margin, possibly too high on that one. But there, hitting the floorboards, making that awkward. Like, look, my opponent has to go and play that now. Look how difficult that is. I'm just going to use the little feature because I like this one. So there we go. You know, so the ball bounces and look at that. That's what I'm looking at. We're looking at getting that ball nice and tight. Okay, so let's keep comparing and contrasting. Another interesting thing that, let's have a little look here. We're just looking at the feet position. You can just see something with Kai. It's just not quite right. Let me just have a look and try to figure out what it is. First thing, you know, I'm definitely, you know, going up higher on the court. I'd like to see him go a little bit higher. The angle of the feet just look a little bit sloppy. I'm not, you know, that needs to tidy up a little bit. And is he exploding off? So let's just have a look at mine on the right. So I'm there. And I'm trying to shuffle. There's quickness. There's a lightness in the footwork. I know when we spoke about it, and I'm just going to go back, you know, a few seconds and show you what I mean with Kai, and I'm just going to let it run for a sec. It'll, put, it'll run mine as well. But just watch on, on the left here. Just watch Kai's movement. And then you can even have a little glance across to the right. I'll just let that run so you guys and girls can have a little sense of the urgency of my footwork. I'm playing, and I'm getting off that shot. I'm not hanging around. From the ghost tap to the... Forehand volley, tap. Okay, let's look at Kai. There, it's okay. He's working hard, but there's maybe a little bit of lightness, a little bit of picking the feet up, a little bit more explosion. I would like to see him do a little bit. So again, there's some good stuff here. And this was the very first time he'd done it, so I'm not expecting miracles right away. But I think you can get the sense that there's definitely some improvement to be had. Okay, there might be one or two more little things to have a little look at here. The quick feet, you can see there. Let me just reinforce that, that I'm pushing. If you just look at mine, that cross under, I'm really swinging that around, rackets up, and even in this position, I'm going with my open stance, which is relatively tough on the backhands. Can you get the sense that I'm starting to twist already in my hips? I've gone there, I'm trying to, you can see that there. Look how I'm trying to get my left hip around. I'm trying to create a bit of a shape with my body, and I can't emphasize this enough. With the ghost, with this position here, I put so much priority and importance into this. You need to be able to go swell because think about this. There's no distraction of a ball. There is no ball there. So for me, you want to get things perfect. Your body position, your reach, your lunge, the quality of what you're doing. You want to use this ghost as writing lines of code, writing perfect code in your system. Because when you come to run that code, you hopefully there's no bugs. If your ghosting is sloppy and you're just doing it going through the motions, can't emphasize enough, that'll translate to the matches and it doesn't work. So you can see there, there's the lunge and the explosion off. Let's have a look at Kai there. Look, I like what he's doing. There's a lot of good stuff here. He's got his racket up. He's, you know, full racket face there. Possibly, just have a look. Is he twisting enough? Maybe not. That feels like he's quite front on, doesn't it? He's looking at the front wall there. Whereas just going to my one there, it just, just feels like I'm more side on. Hopefully you can get that sense that, you know, I'm really prioritizing that side on position. Kai has gone there and he's just opened up the footwork, you know, and the hips are a little bit more looking at the front wall now. So that's the thing I think I was looking for where it just doesn't look quite right. He's obviously swinging quite low as well, whereas I'd like to see him take his racket up to the ball, up to the ball, up to the ball, up to the ball. That's the point of this exercise, this tap-tap exercise. There was one more thing I've noticed that I'm going to talk about and maybe it's going to come in this frame. So it's what I'm doing with the shape of my shot. That one was a bit far out. But that's, again, decent reach. I think you'll obviously see the next one. I do it here. So this is one probably more standard. Can you get the sense of how I'm trying to shape the ball? My racket is going quite a lot to the side wall. I'm bending my racket, that bottom edge, 
is curving out sideways. It's giving it a little bit of side spin. I'm throwing the racket out sideways, minimal backswing. Again, it's not the highest, uh, sorry, it's not the best shot. It's a little bit too high, if I'm honest. But see how the ball is moving across my strings nicely. I'm guiding it and gliding it into that right area of the court. Let's see if there's a slightly better shot I can play here. Here we go. This hopefully is going to be better. You, but even if the shot quality is not quite right, hopefully you're getting the sense of there, how I'm placing the ball. And then look at that. Yeah, that's a lot better. That's where I'm looking to go. Maybe a little bit risky, but there's that first and that second bounce really could have been a bit tighter. But in regards to the technique, this is really fundamentally key. Just look at Kai's here again. Is he too open? Is his body weight leaning back a little bit? And then what happens? It's compromising the quality of what his racket head is doing there. So as he puts his racket head on the ball, he gets a little bit of cut and a little bit of spin. But like I said, I think he's dropped into that horizontal. He's behind the ball. So it's almost like, you know, he's pushing the ball back in. Whereas you can hopefully get the sense that I'm shaping the ball. I'm cutting around it. And I'm just going to zoom right in here so we can really get some nuance on this. Okay, let's make the contact point around about the same area. And you can also notice that, that I'm trying to push forward, aren't I? There's a little bit of forward momentum. Kai's looks a little bit passive in that sense. He's letting the ball drop a little bit. And there, look at that. Can you see there the difference? How at the same contact point, yes, mine's dropping, obviously. But Kai, his strings and his racket face are looking purely at the ceiling. And I just think that's gone too defensive too early. Interesting also with the angle of the shoulder. So let's use the right shoulder there as the horizontal. That could be quite a severe angle. And if I just do the same on mine, let's have a little look here. You know, not too much of a difference, but it just looks like there's a droop. It looks like there's something dropping there rather than trying to stabilize through the chest. So the, the shoulders, the chest and the core. I just don't think the stabilization is as strong there. Let's just look what happens here. Again, let me just reinforce the side on position with the racket, carving it as I hit. Look at the follow through. Look at where I'm placing the follow through. That's probably one of the last final coaching points I'm going to talk about. Look at Kai's follow through. It, it comes across his body. Most of the time, I think he was following through quite nice, but this one stands out quite a lot that my follow through goes and I'm trying to push the racket head at the top of the racket towards the target area, whereas Kai maybe has to compensate his racket pulling across his body. And that just means that it's possibly not, you know, as controlled. Look, beautiful shot. I could take that all day long. He puts the ball in a phenomenal position there. But there's just something that I feel might not be sustainable in a match by doing it like that. So listen, I hope this helps everyone. I have some really deep dive in regard to the, the tap tap exercise, moving side to side. And I think it's a great drill to look to get to reach for the ball, simplify that volley drop, work the legs, work the movements all these big things that you want to be able to do if you want to dominate the game from this middle of the court. So if you liked it, please do share, comment, ask me any questions. I've got a whole bunch more of these coming out soon. Take care and I'll see you at the next one.